What's up, Facebook Live? Nice to see you all. Sorry for the little bit of a tilt going on tonight. I'm trying to figure out how to set this up. Let me see if I move this over here like this. No, that's not gonna work. I might have to hold it tonight, to be honest. Let's see, can I balance it? Anyways, as you are all tuning in, I'd love to know, number one, where you're tuning in from. Number two, I would love to know three things you are currently grateful for. Well, I'm playing with this. I'm just going to hold it. Hello from New York City. Savan, nice to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you're tuning in, I'd love to know, number one, where you're tuning in from. Number two, I'd love to know three things you're grateful for. Right down there in the comment section or over there or over there, depending on where you're looking at it from. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. You can try to help me get it set up if you'd like. Wesley Johnson, Nevada. Reggie from Tulsa. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Savan says, grateful for health, family, and Facebook. Jane, hello from Vera, Florida. Welcome. As you're tuning in, I'd love to know, number one, where you're tuning in from. Number two, I'd love to know three things you're grateful for. Cat from northern New Jersey. Welcome, Cat. Let's see. That could work. We're trying to get this set up here. Oh, perfect. Good work, Mush. Thank you. Let's see. So as you're tuning in, love to know where you're tuning in from. Love to know, number one, where you're tuning in from. Number two, I'd love to know three things you're grateful for. Write down there in the comment section or over there, depending on where you are viewing. The reason I always ask about three specific things you're grateful for isn't because I want to know the warm and fuzzies. I also, I do want to know the warm and fuzzies of your life. I do care, and it is fun to know. Devika from Toronto, welcome. Uh, the reason I always ask is because... According to research done at an amazing university called Harvard, they found that 200 studies and over 275,000 people that when you take a human being like you and we ask you to scan the world around you and look at everything going on in your world and to train your brain to look for what's right with your life versus what's wrong with your life, that it causes you to become happier and mentally more resilient. Let's see, Wesley says, grateful for my ability to change lives. Glendora, California. Hi, Lisa, nice to see you. Uh, thankful for the present moment, family and health, health, wealth, love and happiness. Grateful for my wife, my mom and my kids. Reggie, thank you. Grateful for health, whoop, grateful for health, family. Hello from, hello from Toronto. Good day from Australia. Grateful for my family, home and work. Good work, cat. Happy Chinese New Year. I think it's, Hong Chi Fat? What is it? <laughs> Anyways, I won't mess that up. So happy Chinese New Year, David. I'll get it right one of these days. There's lots of cool dragons and stuff here in Vegas. Make it a fun. I like that you are so humble. Well, thank you, Wesley. G'day, mate. Okay, so as you're tuning in, I see Luke. My Grateful for my career, my wife, my source of great information like Jarek. Thank you, Luke. Grateful to be able to share. Um, so as you're tuning in, I'd love to know, number one, where you're tuning in from. Number two, I'd love to know three things you're grateful for right down there in the comment section or over there or over there. I don't know where it is on yours. Let's see. Today is the first day I stopped working so other companies start your business graphic design t-shirt, poster print. Congratulations. Okay. Aki. You did great. Kung Hai Fat Choi. I knew I was close. Kung Hai Fat Choi, everyone. Happy Chinese New Year. Um, so as you're tuning in, I see that number taken up. Number one, where you're tuning in from. Number two, I'd love to know three things you're grateful for right down there in the comment section. Uh, let's see. Mark. Hello, Stockton, California. Grateful for family, health, and all the animals. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so as we're getting started today, we are going to be chatting about um, why now more than ever, you specifically and those around you need a compelling future, something that you're looking out into the future and you are actually excited about. You look into the future and you see the fact that life is going to be better than it is today. Now, what's wild, Lisa says, grateful for health, family, and your sharing. Well, thank you for that. I'm grateful for all of you tuning in and sharing it as well. Jennifer, I'm grateful for my new stat. Staffy puppy, my family, and my amazing man. Oh, very cool. So let's see. Why now more than ever? Oh, Mete says, I'm grateful for my boyfriend, my business, my purpose, and my mission. Very cool. So here's what's interesting. 
why at this moment of history would you specifically need to have a bright, amazing, compelling future? Because there's so much fear and uncertainty and unknowns and craziness going on in the world that at this point in history, there's young people believing that the future is not going to be as good as now or the past. Therefore, we need to start helping you and others around you to create a crystal clear, compelling vision of something they're wildly passionate, excited about, hopeful for in the future, and every single day focusing our minds on that and focusing our actions in a way to actually move closer to that vision and dream every single day. Now, why do we need that now more than ever? Because there's so much fear, there's so much uncertainty, there's so much craziness in the world. We need to be able to overcome all that crap with the awesomeness that we can create in this world. And what's wild is people always tell me, well, you know, if you understand what I was going through, if you understand the craziness, now here's what's wild. I remember when I was living in a village in Uganda, what was extremely wild is people there still had compelling visions. There was no running water, no electricity, no toilets, and their vision was to do well enough to save up so that one member of their village could make it to college, could go learn something amazing, could bring that something amazing back to the village, and then help everyone have a better life with that new knowledge or information. Uh, you know, I remember, where else was I? I remember uh, a group in Thailand, same thing. I was volunteering in a rural farming, uh, it wasn't a village, but farming part of Thailand. We were living in a schoolhouse and you could trade in English camp or teaching English each day for two meals a day and a place to sleep. So we were trading and I was teaching English there. And I remember I asked the parents, you know, what do you hope most for your kids? And they said, we hope most that they learn English so they could go have a good education so that they have the ability to bring that back to the village and make everyone's life better. And it's amazing what can happen. So my question to you is, um, when you go about setting your big compelling vision for the future, do you believe in number one, that you're supposed to set it so big, so huge, so gigantic, that even if you miss it, at least you landed up way further than you would have ever done before. I think Les Brown says, aim for the moon, because even if you miss, you'll land up with the stars. <laughs> I like that. So that's option number one. Do you believe, number one, you're supposed to set it so crazy big that even if you miss it, you land up way better than you thought you would if, if you didn't set that big? Or option number two, do you believe that you're supposed to be realistic and accurate and specific, meaning you only set it so far so you know you'll absolutely get there? So I'd love to know when you set your big compelling vision for the future, which do you choose? Do you choose option number one or option number two? And I'm going to tell you which is the best way to do this based on what works. But I'd love to know first, which option do you choose? Now, P.S., if you're watching this right now and you know someone who needs a little help creating a compelling future vision because right now they're struggling to see past this moment. They're stuck in all the fear and anxiety and frustration and craziness and stuff and politics and all this other crap that's going on in the world. And they're so fearful right now. They're lost and they're not locked onto a future vision. If you know someone who needs this, please either tag them in the comment section or click share and share it with your community. Let's see. Carlos says, I choose option number one because I'm a dreamer. Mete says option number one. Colin says, I've done both. Now I choose option number two. Very interesting there. Uh, let's see. Shalise says option number one. I say dream big. Interesting. Very interesting to hear your feedback here of what people are saying. Hello from Regina Sask. Just got the keys for the office. I'll be coaching out of. Congratulations, Carla. That's awesome. People who believe in me. People who are showing me much love and solidarity. Very cool. Colin from Switzerland. What's up, buddy? Welcome. Melissa from Pinehurst, North Carolina. Welcome. Carlos from Guatemala, what's up? Welcome back, Carlos. Ah, oh, Aunt Cherry, nice to see you. Let's see, Kat says number two, I get overwhelmed with number one. Interesting. So here's what's wild. I say do both. 
and I'll show you exactly how to do it. I go back and forth in a bit of both. Marks is number two. I'll say do both, but I'll show you exactly how to do it. And this is going to be very tactical, useful information right now. Hello from Australia. G'day, mate. Um, I want to make this tactical and useful. Let me get a sip of water here. Davika says number two, build to progress in confidence. Very cool. Let's see. So here's what I'm going to say. Um, to start off with, I believe in number one, creating a massive, compelling vision. If you're going to take some notes right now, write this down. Massive, compelling vision. Now, that is very different than tangible, measurable goals. A vision and a goal are two different things. Now, I know you can combine them and have a vision that is your goal, but let's just separate them for a second. Now, to have a massive, compelling vision, if you want to use an analogy, I heard it said by someone else where they said, a massive, compelling vision is like a North Star. Now, what does that mean? If you go outside right now and you look up and you see a North Star, you don't say, hey, see you guys later. I'm going to go jump in the car and I'm going to drive to the North Star. I'll see you guys in like 10 minutes. I'll just, you know, see you tomorrow. I'll be at the North Star if you need me. You do not arrive at the North Star. The North Star is so bright and so big that at night right now, if we walk outside and look up and look for it, we'll find that big, bright, breaming North Star up there and we'll go, oh, that's North. I'm going to go that direction. It is going to guide me, lead me. It's going to be a reference point that whenever I look up and try to figure out which way North is, it will always guide my journey in the right direction towards where I ultimately want to be going. So, number one, you're going to write, write down, you want to create a massive, massive, compelling vision. This becomes what we call your North Star. That is this gigantic, huge, bright, beaming, spectacular, awe-inspiring vision for where you ultimately want to be guided towards your entire life. So you need to make this 10 times, 50 times, 100 times bigger than any goal you could ever imagine achieving because you want it to be so big and so bright that in the darkest, craziest, most fearful moments of your life, most uncertain moments of your life, you can look to this North Star, this vision, you can look up in your life and go, wow, that's so bright and compelling. It can guide me through the crap moments of my life. It can guide me through the shit obstacles that will come in my way so I can go over them, under them, around them. I can see through them because the beam from that North Star will be so bright it will literally guide you through the process. So you're going to start with creating a massive, massive, compelling North Star vision. Now, how do you break this down in the categories? Colin says, that makes sense. Yes, sir, it does. So we're going to get to goals in a moment. I'll show you tactically what to do with goals and how to make sure they add up and connect to keep you on track with your big vision. P.S. If you know someone who needs to hear this right now because they're so caught up in political bullshit, please click the share button or tag them in this so they can hear it. Um, and I really appreciate those of you who do. So let's see. So your gigantic vision, and I'd love to know specifically right now in your health, what is your 20-year North Star vision for your health right now? Just see what you can put together in a sentence or two and drop it, drop it right down there in the comment section. In your health and fitness, what is your 20-year North Star vision for how you want to feel, who you want to be, how, how much energy you want to have, just something that's so bright and so amazing and so compelling that even thinking about it makes you go, wow, wow, 20 years from now, if I could feel like that, if I could have that amount of energy, if I could have that amount of just strength and courage and tenacity and who I am as a human being, man, it's going to feel freaking amazing. I can't wait to get there. I can't wait for that to guide myself. And, and here's what's crazy. It's so big and so nuts that even if I only land up 50% towards that goal or that vision, that would be incredible. And so that's what we're looking for right now. What would that vision be? For me, I always say, I'm so grateful at 50 years old, I'm healthier and stronger than the majority of 20 year olds in the world. You know, um, what is it? I'm so grateful at 50 years old, I'm healthier and stronger than the majority of 20 year olds in the world. I'm trying to think of the rest of the piece. I say it every morning. 
But it, it's basically something that, that I look at myself and say, wow, my big compelling vision is I want to be healthier, stronger, more fit, more energetic, uh, more flexible, more alive than the mass majority of 20-year-olds in this world when I'm 50. I, mean, I want to be able to outrun them, outjump them, outwork them, outsprint them, outlift them, and just be like, wow, wow, this feels amazing at 50 years old. And so Elizabeth says, wow, you look amazing. Well, thank you. So this concept is, what would that be? What would be the key components in your health and fitness for 20 years from now? This big vision. Now, what about emotionally? This is an interesting question. What would your vision be for the emotions you want to experience every single day 20 years from now in the future? 20 years from now, how would you want to feel every day? I mean, man, I think about it, I say emotionally, you know, I'm so grateful that emotionally we're passionate about our lives, living on mission, enjoying every moment life has to offer. Now, if I think of that 20 years from now in the future, passionate about my life, living on mission every single moment of the day, literally connected to just feeling that every moment is guided, that I'm on a mission, I'm doing something that matters. And it's like, wow. Let's see. Tons of energy, strong, flexible, feeling like I'm in my 20s. Very cool. Carlos says, my 20-year vision for my health is to achieve an explosive energy level at your dad describes living health. Let's see. When I listen to this program, it gives me so much hope and strength. My dream helped pull me out of a massive accident where I injured and healed very badly. I was seven years in recovery. Wow. Glad to hear you're better. Mark, I actually want to learn yoga and be in the martial arts. Very cool. Very cool. So you're starting to hear. Here's some compelling visions people have for their health and fitness for 20 years from now. Happiness, no matter the situation. Very cool, Elizabeth. Great thought there. So emotionally, she wants to feel happiness regardless of what's going on around her. Now you've got to go next up. So we have health. We have emotions. What about relationships? I always say I'm so grateful that, you know, 20 years from now, we're passionately in love and our love and passion for each other grows daily. When we're together, anything's possible. You know, us being together is home no matter where we are in the world. And to me, believing that and looking so far out in the future and be like, wow, what would it feel like for the next 20 years of our life every day to become more passionately in love, to feel more connected, to feel more alive, to feel more just on mission, to feel like us together, we can make anything happen and everywhere we go is home as long as we're with each other. And when we're together, anything's possible. I'm like, man, that would feel amazing. So I think about that as that next you know, 20 year vision. That's incredible, it's so exciting. Then from there, so what's your relationship vision? We have your health, we have your emotions. What's your relationships? Let's see, Glenn says, I just want to end global poverty. That's all. I don't think I can be happy knowing that others are suffering. So here's what's interesting, Glenn. I'm going to throw this out there as a little caveat because a lot of people believe if I could just help someone else get out of suffering, then everything will be great in my life. Here's the challenge, and this is going to sound ridiculous when I say it, but there's truth in it. Some people like to suffer. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous to most of us because why in the world would anyone want to suffer? But the truth is, it meets their needs as a human being. So having a giant problem, having a giant obstacle that they can never overcome, having things that are so horrible in their world that they can constantly complain about or talk about is how they feel full as a human being. Now, there's so many better ways to go about doing that, yet... Some people choose the other way because it's easier than actually having a goal, having a vision, having a dream, working towards it daily, and doing something about it. Sometimes it's easier to just sit down and fucking complain. Excuse the language, but it's true. And that's what some people do is their vehicle to feel full is they just sit there, tear everyone else down, complain about everything, and that's how they feel that they're significant and special and, and you know the, this powerful person. So it's interesting, Glenn, I'd be careful, my only two senses, I'd be careful on that, only because some people, regardless if you gave them everything you could possibly, you fed them, you clothed them, you housed them, you took care of them, you did everything for them, 
some people will still bitch and moan and complain about how they're suffering because of something that's not the way they want it. Um, so I would just be careful and aware that if the only way you get to feel peace is by everyone else t being taken care of, that some people don't want to be taken care of like that. Some people don't want to be happy. Uh, Colin says, I want to be an emotional place where I don't react to negativity other people's bullshit. Instead, I can affect those. Very cool. Uh, be accepted for who I am and do the same for the person I love. That's beautiful. I wish more people believing in long-term love relationships. Melissa, in 20 years, I want to be peak physical shape, super flexible, living in a beautiful state. That is awesome. Never-ending honeymoon phase with my husband. That's beautiful. So with these thoughts that you're saying, now you got to keep going. So we have, you know, so far you have your health 20-year vision. You have your emotions. You have your relationship. What about your business? What do you want your business to be in 20 years from now? Now, I have a massive business. I believe that 20 years from now, we're going to have 10 different companies generating over $100 million a year by specifically helping people become the happiest, healthiest, and most fulfilled version of themselves. I'm like, wow, I imagine, I'm so grateful that you know, 20 years from now in the future, we're going to have 10 different companies producing over $100 million a year specifically focused on helping people become the happiest, healthiest, most fulfilled version of themselves. Now, that thought's inspiring to me because it's so much bigger than where we're at today that I'm like, wow, that's cool. That's an inspiring vision. That'll compel me. So I'd love to know what's your you know, business vision and then your financial vision. So health, emotions, relationships, business, then finances. You know, where do you want to be in your finances? My belief is if we're doing $100 million in revenue through 10 different companies, I would love to be able to do at least $25 million a year through our companies and investments annual profit. I'm like, that'd be awesome. Then the question becomes, so, so right now we're waiting for you guys to type in what are your business and financial vision of what you want to achieve? I've gotten that bigger yet, okay. So this, remember, this is your North Star. This is the thing that's five times, 10 times, 50 times, 100 times bigger than any tangible goal you would set because you want it to be so big and so bright and so compelling that when you think about it, it would draw you through any obstacles, any challenges, any crazy moments, any you know nutty things that might happen over the time. This would be so huge that it would literally just compel you and pull you through it. That's awesome. I'll just work for you. Well, be my partner in one of those. I work on AR, VR, and cloud. Very cool, Craig. So that giant vision, what would you want your business to be? What would you want your finances to be? And then the final piece is, you know, what would you want your spirituality to be? And I always say, you know, with all this going on, oh, I'm so sorry. I think about contribution first. Business worth a billion by 2020. Very cool, Craig. I dig that. So in the contribution section... In the contribution section, I say, listen, I want to make this amount of money. So 10 businesses, $100 million a year, $25 million profit. I'm like, that would be incredible. And that's huge. That's crazy. It's astronomical compared to where we're at right now. Yet, it's compelling enough to be like, wow, that would pull me. But here's why I want it. And this is really important. One thing that I've learned um, from watching different people around me and looking at a correlation that always existed when they were working to try to make money only for themselves, they could only get so far. But the moment they found a compelling reason bigger than themselves to fight for, they landed up astronomically growing what it is that they were up to. And so what's interesting is I can tell you correlations in my family, friends, clients, everyone around us that if you watch closely, not always, but many times, more often than not, if they have a big heart, and they align right by having a compelling reason much bigger than themselves to fight for, they land up making so much more than if they were just working for themselves. Um, the example I always give is, you know, my dad went from making 34,000 a year to a million dollars a year in one year when he found out I was about to be born. He went from one million to three million a year when he decided to dedicate um, paying for every single homeless person in North County, San Diego to have a meal paid for. So he figured out how much it would cost to feed all the homeless population through one specific soup kitchen. He wrote a check and figured out how to triple his income in one year. It's pretty remarkable. 
And, and so the concept of figuring out this next piece, my thought is I want to be able to, if I want to make that hundred million based on those 10 companies do 25 million based on the income and the, the revenue from our or profit from our uh, investments, this next piece is why do I really want it? It's not just for me. That's nice. But why do I really want it? And I said, I want it because we want to be able to build a hospital. I you know, had some time where I got pretty sick in a village over in Uganda. And when I looked around, I went, wow, they really need a solid hospital in a place like this because they don't, I mean, literally when I was leaving, they asked me if I had any heavy painkillers that I could leave behind for the women who were going to be giving birth at the clinic there. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't have anything like that. And they're like, oh, no, Advil, Tylenol, like anything you could help that might relieve pain while they're giving birth. And I was like, oh, my goodness. You give a woman having a baby Tylenol? <laughs> Makes me choke thinking about it. It's insane. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it's just such a crazy thought. I'm like, wow. You know, I would love to be able to provide a hospital, to be able to build a hospital in rural parts of the world so that they have access to supplies and, situ and doctors and, and healthcare in a way that could take care of them where they need it most. Not only that, I, I really am huge in education because when you can help someone discover what their vision is, you can help someone then literally figure out what they have to learn, what they have to go educate themselves on to actually turn that vision into reality, and you can help them live it fully, then you can help them pay it forward. It's a core concept. Learn what it takes to live the life of your dreams, live it fully and apply it all, get the results you want, and then give it, pay it forward and help others do the same. It's a core concept here. So I also believe in schools and education. Uh, we're building right now our second school. We built one a couple years ago in rural China. Uh, I don't know where the location of this one's going to be, but we're about, uh, I think we need about $15,000 more to finish the, the funding to build this next school. And so building the hospital, um, building our schools, we want to be able to provide, you know, we dream of a clinic or a hospital that'd be able to help at least a thousand people a month through, through the services it can provide to the local community. And then schools, ideally, that we'd do enough of them where we'd be able to provide education to at least 10,000 children per month worldwide. I'm like, wow, that's exciting. And ideally, if we really hit those numbers, the fun part is we could probably do way more than just one hospital and have it funded. And we could probably do way more schools than that, too. And be providing education and health care to people who really need it in all parts of the world and even here in the U.S., too. I mean, it's exciting. And we started tying our financial goals specifically to the difference we wanted to make. So I'll talk about goals in a minute. Um, but what's really interesting is as we started to tie them together, like this year we've been able to provide, thank you to you know Dads Matching and Feed America. I think we're up to 22,000 or 33,000 meals so far we've been able to provide just by giving a percentage of everything we make for this first month to... Um, Feed America, and they're able to take that and multiply it out in the meals, and, and it's, it's a blessing. And so the better we do, the more people we get to feed right now, and money goes towards people we want to feed, money goes towards building a school, eventually it'll go towards building a hospital. But the, again, the big compelling vision for the difference you want to make. So if you're just tuning in right now, I saw the number tick up. Number one, what's your big, giant, North Star compelling vision for your health and fitness, your emotions, your relationship, your business, your finances, the difference or impact or charity difference you want to make in the world, and then finally spirituality. And my piece is, I 20 years from now, I want to be in a place that I feel that every single step is guided by faith. And, you know, fear doesn't exist in my life because I know I'm guided and I know every single step is guided by faith. And I have that core belief and I live in that place every single day, mind, body, and spirit with zero questioning of it. I just feel that I'm guided and I'm there. So that's where I want to be 20 years from now. So that's your giant vision. Giant, 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 compelling vision. Now what's interesting is you got to take that vision and then bring it into now. So how do we take a 20 year vision and make it into a this year goal? I always say work backwards in chunks. So take your 20 year vision, come back to your 10 year vision, Come back to your five-year vision. Notice that they're all visions. So 20-year vision, 10-year vision, five-year vision. Now we transition from a vision to a goal, to a one-year goal. 
Now, with a goal, you're going to switch gears. You're going to go from a giant, compelling vision to a tangible, measurable, specific goal. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you were going to go run a marathon, and it was a vision-based marathon. So you say, okay, great. I'm going to go run a marathon. And they say, congratulations. And they say, ready, go. And you start running. And you're like, well, it's my, my vision is to finish the marathon. So uh, which way do I go? And they'll say, just run towards your vision. So you start running in the direction that's your North Star. And you say, well, how far have I gone? And they go, we don't know, but keep running. And you're like, am I there yet? Am I halfway there? And am I a third of the way there? Am I 26th of the way there? And they're like, just keep running. We'll tell you when we get there, hopefully. After so long, it'd be really hard because you don't know how far you are. You don't know if you're on track, off track. You don't know if you're going in the right direction. All you know is you hope it's going to turn out the right way. So here's what's interesting. You need to take that 20-year vision, 10-year vision, 5-year vision, now transition over to a one-year goal. Now a goal, if you want to use a simple term that's overused a lot, but I love it and it's amazing, which is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant with a timeline. And so what's wild is make it specific. So specifically in your health, what specific result do you want to achieve by the end of 2017? What specific result do you want to achieve in your health? What specific result do you want to achieve in your emotions? What specific result do you want to achieve in your business or relationship, your business, your finances, your charity, your giving back, and then your, your spiritual life? What specific tangible result would you like to achieve in the next 12 months? Now, this becomes the finish line, the marathon end point, the finish line of your race. And then you want to work it backwards and say, if that's where I need to be in a year from now, where do I need to be, you know, three months from there? So the third or the fourth quarter, the beginning of that fourth quarter, where do I need to be at the halfway point of the mid year? Where do I need to be at the end of this first quarter or second, you know, the beginning of the second quarter? And you map it out. So you do a year goal, six month goals, three month goals, one month goal. And these are very specific, measurable, tangible results you're going after. What does that mean? If you're running a marathon, there is a specific, tangible location you should show up at roughly at, let's say, five to eight minutes. So five to eight minutes or let's say eight to ten minutes for most people into the race, you want to show up at mile number one. Now, if you show up and you show up at six minutes and you're early, you don't quit the race. You're like, boom, I got there early, so I'm going to sit down and do nothing for seven minutes until everyone else catches up and then I'll start running. No. If you get there early, you go, hey, I'm ahead of schedule. All right. And you keep going. And, and you might slow up just a little if you want. Or you just say, screw it. I'm going to be ahead of schedule. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish early. And you go after those goals and you get there ahead of time. Now, if you show up to mile number one and you're a little behind the schedule, you don't quit. You're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even get there on mile one on time. Screw it. I'm out. No. You go, hey, I'm a little bit behind schedule. That's okay. That means I'm going to pick up my pace and start moving a little bit quicker to get on track, to be on track with getting the outcome I want, which is finishing at a certain time by the end of the year. Now, that's just your way to gauge your pace, just like running the race here. So you want to set up your mile markers, as I call them. So just like in a race, you go mile one, mile two, mile three, or kilometer one, kilometer two, kilometer three, blah, blah, blah. Um, that same concept exists with measuring your performance towards your goals over this one-year goal process. So 12 months, six months, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. Now, what does daily outcomes look like? Let me show you. So this is something I write out each week. And... This is something that helps me organize my week. So I use this process. Uh, my dad created it and he put it together and it's the concept of starting off in the middle of what is the outcome. So health and fitness for this week, my outcome is 210 pounds with 10% body fat or less with world-class health, flexibility, strength, and endurance. Then you got to ask not only what do you want, but why do you want it? So I wanted to prepare for a long, healthy, and abundant life, to maximize and energize daily, to maximize the gift God has blessed me with, and to train like a warrior. Then I said, okay, what has to happen for me to then make it to get those goals? So hour of power daily, lift three days a week, run daily, yoga three times a week, Wim Hof breathing, cold showers, three solid meals each and every day. 
And it's like, wow, very cool. So I have a plan. I know what I want. I know why I want it. I know exactly what I'm going to do or how I'm going to go about making it happen, just to be specific for you. Now, some of them that might get interesting is people say, well, what do you do in your relationship? Can you really have a tangible, measurable goal? I say, of course. My relationship goal for this week is to make my wife feel like the most loved, appreciated, and adored woman in the world, to acknowledge all of what she does and all of who she is daily, to anticipate ways to love and adore her daily, and to be 100% present and put us first. And it's like, wow, that's a measurable, tangible outcome. Now from there, why would I want that? To cherish and build and celebrate the greatest gift life has to offer, because I can, because I love her, to leave a love legacy and to strengthen and grow us daily. It's like, wow, that's really neat. Now, what could I do? What actions could I take consistently to make that happen? Here you go. Date night, listen and learn about who she is, what she needs, and what she desires daily. Strive daily to turn our dreams into reality. Appreciate and praise her daily and find more ways to fill and fuel her daily. And so what's pretty wild is, hey, I have a tangible, measurable outcome. I know why it's a must. And I know specific actions I can take this week to make that happen. So just a couple examples there of something you could do to go about achieving those goals. And these are things you could be working on each and every day. So you have your gigantic compelling vision. Then you have your short-term goals. And here's what's wild. Let me ask this. If I were to make my wife feel like the most loved, appreciated, adored woman in the world each and every week, to acknowledge all of who she is and strives to be daily, and to anticipate ways to love and adore her daily, and to be 100% present and put us first, let's say for the next 20 years, what do you think our relationship is going to be like 20 years from now? I'm guessing it's going to be like one that we're madly in love and passionate with each other. Um, when we're together, anything's possible, and our love is thriving and growing every day. Now, how would I guess that? Because in my mind, if I take my actions I'm committing to today, and I start playing five years into the future, or let's say one year into the future, two years into the future, five years in the future, 10 years in the future, 20 years in the future, what will my life look like if that's what I do every single day, week, and month from now until then? And that's a good test to say, okay, what will it add up to? Now, here's what's true. Will it adjust along the way? And the truth is absolutely. You know, I might need to add more to that or take some away from it over time, depending on how life goes, just like the race. Sometimes I need to speed up. Sometimes I need to slow down to stay on track. So same thing here. This is what's needed right now. And this added up over time will certainly help move us in the right direction. Now, over time, if things change, I need to adjust accordingly to keep us on track for that ultimate long-term 20-year vision we have. Here's what's fun. Every year, the 20-year vision is still 20 years out. So right now, you know, 20 years from now would make us 52 years old. But next year, it would make us 53 years old. Meaning every year the 20 year vision stays out there just like the North Star. You know, you don't get closer to the North Star every day. It is always out in the distance guiding the journey. Same thing with this giant vision. So each year you update the 20 year vision to continuously keep it at 20 years from now. And so it'll get bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter and brighter. So I thought this might be useful for you. Spectacular content, man. Every session gets better and better. More men and women need to believe in daily rituals to love and relationships. Absolutely. So if you found this useful, if you found this tangible and tactful and something someone could do, please click the share button and help spread this message out there. I think right now with what's going on in politics and around the world, uh, more people need to take time to sit down. Oh, I forgot to tell you what to do with your vision. So more people need to sit down, map out a wild, awesome, compelling future for themselves, map out goals so a year goal six month goal three month goal 12 you know this month goal daily weekly goals and they need to every single day here's what to do with them read them aloud 
I start my day by walking on my treadmill, looking at my vision boards, which has my depiction of my vision, and speaking aloud my vision. I'm so grateful that tw you know, 20 years from now, I'm healthier and stronger than ever before. At 50 years old, we're healthier and stronger than the majority of 20-year-olds in the world. I'm so grateful that emotionally, we're passionate about our lives, living on mission, enjoying every moment life has to offer. I'm so grateful we're passionately in love, and our love and passion for each other goes daily. When we're together, anything's possible. So I start with that 20-year vision, then I break it down to my 10-year vision, five-year vision, one-year goals, all the way down to my six-month goals. And then, listen, I'll go down and go, hey, from there all the way till now, right here this week. So what am I going to do this week to be on track with my vision? Well, right here, health. I want to be 210 pounds and 10% body fat or less. I want world-class health, flexibility, strength, and endurance. Why? To prep for a long, healthy, and abundant life, to maximize and energize daily, to maximize the gifts God has blessed me with, to train like a warrior. How am I going to do it? Hour power daily, lift three days a week, run daily, yoga three times a week, Wim Hof, breathing, cold showers, three solid meals. Yes. Now, what's interesting, in that moment, imagine doing this for, let's say, 20 minutes in the morning, speaking aloud your 20-year vision, 10-year vision, 5-year vision, 1-year vision, your one-year goals, your six-month goals, your three-month goals, your, your monthly goals, your weekly goals, and then you read aloud your daily actions and your, your daily outline of what you're going to do. Now, tell me how you feel after that for 30 minutes, and then you see the news pop on. The news comes up, and for most people, instead of jarring you and going, <gasps> I can't believe it, oh my gosh, what will happen next? You're like, please, move out of the way, I'm coming through, I have a vision, I know what I'm here for, I know where I'm going, and nothing will stop me. And it doesn't matter what happens in the world, I will make this reality. And there's the truth of where this becomes powerful. Because you're creating an empowering vision for yourself, be your family, your community, yourself, whoever else you want to involve in your vision here, because you're doing this, all of a sudden, all the other nonsense in the world becomes mute and obsolete because you're so laser focused on where you're going that even if it does stand in your way, you'll find a way through it, over it, under it, around it. It doesn't matter. You will find a way and you constantly compel yourself to be the best version of yourself each and every day. And so my thought is, Something like this, and this might be extreme for some of you, but even a mini version of this will be more useful than allowing your mind, body, or emotions to get caught up in nonsense and distracted from who you are, who you want to become, and how you want to make that happen. Now, ideally, the one tip I would throw out there is for most people, when you start, a lot of this is going to be about you and your goals and your vision. If you really want to amplify it, find a way to make everything that you do something that will benefit others around you. It, you know, By you becoming healthy, it'll help your family become healthy. By you becoming emotionally fit, it'll help people in your, you know, that you work with become emotionally fit. By you becoming financially abundant, it'll help people in your community be taken care of and it'll bring more abundance to the community around you. Find a way to tie all the outcomes and goals you'd like to achieve to making a difference in much more than just your life specifically. So our dinner just got here. I'm going to jump and go eat some deliciousness uh, that my wife just brought up. Hope you all have an amazing evening, day, morning, afternoon. If you found this useful, please click that share button. And thank you for all the thumbs up and hearts that are floating by. I really appreciate those. Hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.